Fala pessoal, hoje temos mais uma edição do Talk Show MD e a entrevistada de hoje é a autora do livro Passarinha, que foi publicado aqui no Brasil pela editora Valentina. Hi Catherine, how are you? Hi, I'm great. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, that's great. So, uh, Catherine, I'm going to start by asking you a few questions about you and your writing process. And to start with, I would like to know, when did you know that you wanted to be a writer? Oh, gosh, I guess I always loved writing, uh, probably ever since I read my big sister's diary. Uh, I snuck into her room and read that and I realized actually it was really boring and I could write much more fun stuff than that. So I kept my own diary and made it all up. And uh, I think I just never stopped writing. <laughs> oh, that's a great way to start, right? <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. I bet it was. So uh, I, I know you've been to Brazil and did you like it here? Oh my gosh, it was beautiful. I want to be there right now. I wish I could oh, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's such a warm, friendly, vibrant place. Uh, it was. It fantastic. is right. Oh, great! You liked it. And uh, do you have any plans of coming back soon? Uh, oh, I would love to. <clears throat> I'm. Hoping to get back uh, at some point. I, my my friend Christy Dempsey is the librarian at the American School, and uh, mm -hmm. it would be fun to come visit again and uh, have a little more time to go around and tour things. We did a little bit of that, but uh, and also in Curitiba. But it would be fun to spend more time just getting to know the place. Oh, great! And do you like traveling? I do. I love it. Um, in March, I'm going to a school in Singapore for a couple of weeks. So that'll be really mm -hmm. fun. I've never been to that part of the world before. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's a great opportunity as a writer. Sometimes you do get to go visit schools all around the world. And I love that part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe that it must be great. And like from the places you visited, what are your favorites, like the most beautiful and the most interesting places you've visited so far? Oh, gosh. Well, Brazil would definitely have to be one of them. That's <laughs> uh, I, I love that. And uh, the weather's wonderful, too. It's freezing here today. Mm -hmm. so I'm thinking oh, about really? a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Any place that has some water is also lovely. You know, a lake or a river mm -hmm. or the seaside, there's something about mm -hmm. that. And so, uh, I love seeing the different kinds of trees in different countries. Uh, when I went to Guam, they have all kinds of interesting trees that look like Dr. Seuss trees from the mm -hmm. children's books. And yeah. apparently the author had been there during World War II and that's where he got his inspiration for. Oh, that's nice. Trees. Yeah, and that's what travel does. It gives you uh, a different look, a different insight into the world and a lot of inspiration. So I think it's very important for authors to travel. Yeah, th that was actually my next question. Like, uh, I, I believe that traveling might be a great source of inspiration and of course of knowledge. Uh, but where else do you get inspiration from? Uh, just everyday life. I mean, I will hear a story on the news or somebody will say something or even just seeing someone. Uh, I will watch the way they're walking or watch two people having a conversation and wonder what the story behind it is. And since I don't know, I make it up myself and decide what their story is. And uh, that's that's how a lot of stories come. And usually, though, a character starts talking in my head. So I have this story going on and I don't really know where it's going, but I have a main character and then I start having these secondary characters and I have a great sense of place where they are. Mm -hmm but I don't know why they're there or <laughs> what they're doing in my head. 
So I have to sit with them for a while and start writing down everything they say and write some descriptions of where they go and what it's like. And eventually uh, a plot starts coming, the, the storyline. For me, that's what comes last uh, because the, it's important to have some kind of structure and a story, of course, but to me, when I read, I really care about the people and uh, how they're interacting and how they're growing and changing. It's the people that make the story for me. I don't really care that much what they do when. It's really just watching them develop and sort of like spending time with new friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's very nice. Uh, okay, so let's talk about Mockingbird, right? Okay. But before we get to the story itself, I've heard there was a, a play based on it. So were you involved in the whole process? Not really. There was a separate playwright and a producer who came up with the, the play. And the playwright, I think, did not necessarily want to talk with me until she had finished because she really wanted to do her own thing and not be influenced, which I think is good. Uh, I think yeah. uh, theater is a different art form from a book. So she really needed to have that freedom to express her feelings and the story the way that she interpreted it. And actually, I thought it was fantastic. Um, it, wa it wasn't, maybe if it had been really different from the book, I wouldn't have liked it, but it, but it wasn't. I mean, it captured the essence of the story and she did a great job of pulling out the important parts of the story really to highlight because it was only a little over an hour. So it's hard to, get a whole book into an hour, even one that's not very long, like Mockingbird. Mm -hmm. uh, I was very pleased with it, though. I thought yeah. she did a fantastic job. That's awesome. And uh, is there any chance of it coming to Brazil? Well, it might. It has been going around to a number of colleges and community theaters around the U.S. And mm -hmm. uh, I, yeah, I think it could quite possibly. Yeah, I heard people talking about it, and I think it would be a great idea, right? A lot of people like your book, so. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think it's a fun play for kids because it, uh, mm -hmm. even if they haven't read the book, the story comes across, and they can have some empathy for that main character and what she's going through, and understand her a little better, uh, and and still laugh because some of it's funny. So. Oh, nice. Now to the story. Uh, where did the whole idea come from? Oh, uh, my daughter was diagnosed with autism, um, Asperger's, and mm -hmm. so I um, wanted to write a book that explained her a point of view, sort of what it's like to be inside her head. Mm -hmm. uh, and that I wanted to do by using a main character who was young and show what it felt like for her. It, because of because of my daughter, I really wanted other people to know what she was like and understand her. So that was my real motivation for, for writing the story. Although Caitlin in the story is not, it's a little bit like my daughter, but not very much. So, because mm -hmm. I didn't want to write a story about my daughter that's too personal and I didn't want to upset that's her true. or anything um but the spirit is is there yeah. mm -hmm. great and uh, can you tell us a little of what happens in the book yes before the book opens uh caitlin has lost her brother in a terrible shooting event unfortunately here in the states we have these school shootings mm -hmm. because we're a gun crazy society uh, but um uh it's not about that it's really about how do people come together and deal with grief and find closure and be able to move forward even somebody on the autism spectrum and I chose that, that theme, that plot line, because when I was writing the story and before I had a plot, because plot 
doesn't come very quickly for me. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a local university with this terrible shooting, and I had to try to explain that to my kids, including my daughter, and I wondered how she was processing that. What did she make of that? Because you can't really explain it. It's just crazy. Uh, so then I thought, well, how would my character handle that? And then what if my character had to deal with something like that? really close up and immediate and it affected her world and that's when I chose to pursue that that line um, so it's a book about her uh, kind of opening up of her emotions and realizing that she doesn't have him to rely on anymore so she's going to have to reach out and make some friends and and create more of a, a world for herself that's great and uh, we can see that there is a kind of connection between Mockingbird and To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Can you tell us a little about this connection? Yeah, that was very interesting. This happens to writers a lot. We, we <laughs> don't do something intentionally, but subconsciously something happens. So when I was writing it, I was at least halfway through when I was thinking her voice reminded me of someone and mm -hmm. I didn't know who and I couldn't figure out what is she's so reminiscent of something or someone and I finally figured out she was like the the main character in To Kill a Mockingbird in the sense that she's very frank and open and honest and the main character in To Kill a Mockingbird is like six or seven and that's appropriate for that age for somebody who's 10 or 11, especially a girl, they tend to have learned these filters and social graces and know more, you know, how to read social cues and how to behave. But of course, for Caitlin in Mockingbird, she doesn't have that ability. So uh, it's it's kind of the often why kids on the spectrum uh, have an easier time making friends with somebody a lot younger or maybe an adult, but peer-to-peer -peer friendships is harder. Um, so then when I realized that, I realized some other similarities between To Kill a Mockingbird and Mockingbird, and that is that uh, there's no mom, that mm -hmm. the dad is kind of distant, the bro older brother was the one who tells the younger sister how to behave and what to say and all of that, uh, and the book is about tolerance and understanding people. And so I thought, wow, uh, I already had Devin, her older brother, being an Eagle Scout. So maybe he would have seen this movie. Maybe he would have nicknamed her Scout. And it sort of developed from there. That's really that cool. seed that was already there subconsciously that I didn't realize. Yeah. Great. And uh, we cannot forget that, among others, you won the Young People's Literature National Book Award for Mockingbird. How did you feel? Yeah, that was quite a surprise. I was not <laughs> expecting that at all. And it was a, a really lovely experience because all of the finalists get to go to New York and you get to meet with kids and do a reading and a press conference with young people. And so there are a lot of really fun things that you do together with this group of five people. Uh, and then there's the banquet, which is, and the, and the award ceremony, which is sort of like, the Oscars or something, because they, they roll out a red carpet and they take all these photographs. It's really, I mean, it's sort of almost tongue in cheek. It's kind of funny, um, poking fun at itself almost, except that it's a serious and really uh, amazing event. But for me, I was not nervous at all because I was sure that I would not win. And so I could just sit back and relax and enjoy the show. But then, then when my name was called, um, my husband was there and he said, hey, hey that's you. You have to get up. <laughs> wow, I was kind of stunned. <laughs> oh, it must have been great, right? It yeah. Must be very beautiful. Yeah, and I was very grateful for that. It was really quite, quite an, uh, an honor. Yeah, so congratulations. <laughs> and... What about now? What are your next plans? Are you working on something right now? 
Yes, I'm working on several books. I have a uh, picture book biography about Miriam Makeba, who is a South African singer and activist that comes out mm -hmm. later this year. And also a new novel, which is kind of like Mockingbird, um, only not quite as heavy as Mockingbird is. And it's called The Incredible Magic of Being. Uh, and I'm looking forward to that one in September. It's going to be great. Yeah, it's very good. Um, yeah. And I have a novel in verse I'm working on that should come out the following year. Another picture book biography. And I'm working on a YA novel, a young adult novel at the moment. So mm -hmm. uh, it's it's fun to have a lot of different things to work on. I enjoy yeah, that. I believe it. Uh, okay. So now... Before I ask you the last question, I would like to play a game with you. Okay. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna ask you a few would you rather questions and I wanna see what you're gonna say, right? Are you okay. ready? Sure. So tell me, uh, would you rather live one single life that lasted a thousand years or 10 different lives that lasted a hundred years? Oh, I want to live 10 different lives because I love experiencing different things. It would be like traveling to different countries or even writing different books. It's, it's like that. It's experiencing a whole new world and set of circumstances. I like that, that question. That would be my choice, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, never be able to say anything or having to say every single thought you had. Hmm. Would I be able to write if I couldn't say anything? I think so. <laughs> oh, okay. Then I would do that because I would love to be able to express myself, but I'm not that good at expressing myself verbally. So I don't mind mm -hmm. if sitting in the back row and not speaking as long as I could write. <laughs> okay. So that's great. Great choice. Wear winter clothes in the desert or summer clothes in the snow? Ooh, okay. <laughs> Well, I get cold pretty easily, so I guess I would wear the winter clothes in the desert, and that would also keep me from getting sunburned. So it's practical. True. Very good. <laughs> Traveling time to meet your family from the past or to meet your family from the future? Oh, gosh, that is a tough one. Ooh. Hmm. I guess I, if I had to pick, and I do have to pick, uh, I guess I would say uh, in the past, going back and seeing kind of where everybody came from and, and how they look today versus back then. Okay, great. And the last one, have hiccups for a whole day or spend the same day with the feeling that you have to sneeze but not being able to? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I don't mind hiccups that much, so I just go for a day with hiccups, I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, great. So now to the last question, right? What advice would you give to those who want to start writing professionally but feel insecure or unprepared? Ah, uh, yes. Well, probably they are already reading a lot and writing a lot, and those are important things to do. Uh, also to have a critique group or at least a trusted reader to whom you can show your work and get some feedback because sometimes we have the story in our heads and, and we can picture it all, but we don't necessarily get it all down in writing. We all do that. Um, so it's really good to have somebody else read it it's to be able to say, I, I, wait, I'm not sure what's happening here or I don't understand this. So uh, that's helpful. And then going to actual writing conferences where you can meet some agents and editors. Sometimes you might even get a chance to have a few pages of your manuscript reviewed by the, the editor. Uh, and just getting to know some people in the industry and hear what they're looking for and what they like and what they don't like is very valuable. And I do think publishing is still a fortunately, still a very personal thing. It's very subjective. So you might find uh, an editor who doesn't like your work, but that doesn't mean somebody else won't like it. They might love it. Uh, and making contacts and connecting with people is, is important to an editor or an agent as well, because they have to 
deal with you for a long time. So, so they want to know that they can get along with you. That's, that's important. So. Okay, that's great. And so thank you, Catherine. It was great having you here. And I hope we get the chance to talk again soon. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Catherine Erskine, the author of Pasarina. And uh, I will be on Talk Show MD, and don't miss it. <laughs>